Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins, and Super Mario Run is predicted by many to be the next game to take down Pokemon Go, but so far, Nintendo's investors aren't really convinced. After the launch of Nintendo's new iOS game yesterday, starring our favorite plumber, their share prices actually dropped 5%. That drop also contributed to the lowering of Nintendo's market value by around $2 billion as well. That's despite the game already flying to the top of the paid iOS app charts right above Pokemon Go, <laughs> which is still there at number two. It's not, let's be clear, it's not uncommon for share prices to see a brief little dip after the release or announcement of a product. The same thing happened to Nintendo after the Switch was revealed. However, their stock did go up quite a bit following the release of Pokemon Go, even though they didn't make it. As for why investors would be a little bit cooler than expected on Super Mario Run, analysts say it has to do with the game's premium price tag, but I paid $10, Kaden, you paid $10, Brian, have you paid your $10? Th three out of three people currently in this room have paid $10. So that is, a according to YouTube, a an appropriate sample size to say that the entire world has paid that. Some retailers, <laughs> you like that, Brian? <laughs> okay, I did good. Some retailers briefly got NES classics back in stock yesterday for like this long, only to have them sell out all over again. The latest release of NPD numbers for November has given us a better idea of just how many units the retro console sold in total here in the States, which comes in right around 196,000. Probably would have been a lot higher if they'd actually sent more over here in the first place, but it's still an impressive number. That 196,000 also means that the NES Classic almost sold as much in its first 30 days as the Wii U did over the last six months. That kinda hurts. NPD's numbers indicate that from the period of April through September, the Wii U only, yeah, the off topic thinks that's hilarious. Uh, that the Wii U only sold around 220,000 units. When you add that 196,000 to Japan's 262,000, you get a really good launch for a new old system. Also, we want more, please. Mario isn't the only retro hero coming to your phone. You ready for some classic Mega Man action with terrible touchscreen controls? No? Well, you're getting them anyway. Yep, Capcom is porting Mega Man's 1 through 6 to iOS and Android devices next year. They've only announced dates for Japan, but the games will drop there on January 6th, so the rest of us could be getting it pretty soon after, assuming anybody wants it. A preview screen shows that the game has been somewhat customized for mobile, with your life bar moved to the middle left of the screen and space has been made for virtual controls. Now comes the hard part, which is trying to beat a Mega Man game without the precision of a control. This isn't actually the first time Capcom has ported Mega Man to mobile though. It previously released Mega Man 2 and an abridged version of Mega Man X, so we'll see how faithful these translations are. Following some interesting rumors yesterday about Switch being less powerful than we thought it might be, we've got a major developer adding a couple comments that may cause some concern for fans hoping to see full-fledged next-generation games on the machine. Finder AU spoke with Arcane Studios' Ricardo Barre about Bethesda's partnership with Switch and what other games might be included besides Skyrim, which, again, still hasn't been confirmed even though it was in the trailer. When Finder asked Barry if Switch was even powerful enough to run Prey, Barry replied, I have no idea. There are discussions around it, but there is no conclusion yet. Now this comes after some other comments Bethesda's Pete Hines made in another recent interview with Finder, where he said games would release on Switch as long as they didn't have to compromise on the game's quality. Now, considering that Prey is out in 2017 and there doesn't seem to be a consensus yet, that might mean that we won't see it making its way to Switch. Well, at least not at launch, or they just legitimately don't even know if it's gonna be on that platform yet. <sighs> poor Battleborn, pour one out. Pour, 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 pour it out. It's now become the equivalent of like one of those DVDs that ends up in the dollar bin at Walmart, except those usually take a couple decades to get there. Someone on NeoGAF posted a picture of it on sale in the UK recently for a whopping three pounds 99, which even if you translate that into dollars, I still ain't a lot. Adding insult to injury, you can still see the original 50 pound price tag on the game. Whew. Are you sure you're not considering free to play, guys? Battleborn, as you know, was a first person shooter that some people liked, but it had the all time terrible luck of being released around the same time as Overwatch. 
yeah, kind of like making a movie about spaceships and light swords and releasing it maybe the same week as Star Wars. Anyway, that's why they're basically giving the game away now. Though they've continually denied plans to make it free to play, this is still pretty close. Development on the latest God of War game is going pretty well, according to its director, but also incredibly hectic. Hmm, does sound like a God of War game. Director Corey Barlog made that comment on Twitter in response to a worried fan this week who asked, any development about the new God of War game? I'm worried because I hear you guys lacking of manpowers during development. And then he added a frowny face. To which Barlog responded, nothing to worry about, dev teams always need people. Games are big and complicated, it's going well, just incredibly hectic. The game is expected to launch next year on PS4, and unlike other versions, which were strictly linear, the new game could have alternate pathways, giving players more choice. Barla confirmed on Twitter that the game's demo had alternate pathways, which would be a really cool new direction for the series. Uh, there is a rumor going around that Batman villain Poison Ivy, uh, who is going to appear in Gotham City Sirens, could be played by Megan Fox. Bleeding Cool has speculated that Fox could be joining the cast of Gotham City Sirens along with Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. What's the evidence? Well, apparently she ordered some very specific Harley Quinn comics that feature Poison Ivy and had them sent to her Warner Studios address. Sure, okay, that's thin evidence, but that doesn't mean that it's not a clue. Of course, Fox is no stranger to comic book movies. She did star in the recent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles films, and she played Lois Lane on Robot Chicken. Then again, maybe it's, look, we, it's, maybe she's just really into Harley Quinn comics. Just let her geek out in peace if that's what's actually happening. Hopefully. Today is Rogue One Day, officially, even though it kind of opened last night, and we've already got some early numbers in from those first showings. Deadline reports that Rogue One's preview night brought in $30 million for Disney, which makes it the second biggest preview night ever for the month of December. That $30 million sounds all well and good until you compare it to last year's The Force Awakens, which did close to $57 million for its Thursday opener. Tonight's expected to be a much bigger night for the film, adding another $60 to $65 million and helping it moved past a projected $140 million for its first weekend. Now, given the early positive buzz around the movie, the hype might only intensify and drive more butts into seats. I mean, I guess people are excited for Star Wars? Who knew? Also, if you don't want to get spoiled, you should probably go see it quick because they're already everywhere. It's like a minefield out there. Okay, we know textbooks are expensive. Any college student does, but this this is nuts. The first edition of Sir Isaac Newton's Principia Mathematica sold for a whopping $3.7 million at Christie's this week, making it the most expensive printed science book ever sold at auction. The version sold is bound in goat skin and was one of the first 80 editions that was printed for continental Europe. A similar edition of the 1687 book, also bound in animal skin, sold at Christie's for $2.5 million in 2013. This book is kind of a big deal because it's one of the greatest science books ever published. It contains Newton's famous third law of motion, which stated for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Einstein called it perhaps the greatest intellectual stride that has ever been granted to any man to make. Wow, that would have made for great for the book covers. Anyone know how to write on goat skin? Goat skin, right? Would you pay $3.7 million for the Newton's third law? I bet you would. Let us know what you think of all of today's news in the comments down below. And to get more of these every day, as well as all the crazy big news going on, like this video and subscribe to the new. Megan Fox is also in the Transformers movie. Oh she God, that's right. Comic books. So here's the problem. In, here's the thing about Megan Fox and comic book movies is none of the ones that she's in are the good ones. No, what was the last I mean, time you heard oh, somebody so say, Oh, I can't wait to go see that new Megan Fox movie. Like she was the, she was the low point of the Turtles movies.